Welcome back, everyone. We've got a brand new custom knife to talk about. And it's not new as in brand new just made, although it was just made. But it's a new knife that's on the market now. Um, this is the SG Knives Gripper. Now, this was designed by, and it's, it's not an unboxing, but I kind of wanted to talk about the packaging for just a minute. This was designed by Jason Grant, a uh, tattoo artist by trade down in Southern California and also a competitive shooter. He also has a YouTube channel, which I'll link down below. Now, I've been talking to Jason on and off for, I don't know, a year or so, uh, maybe. Uh, you know, whatever. We've been talking back and forth for quite a while. He designed this knife in Hawaii on a cocktail napkin. Your typical American dream, sketch something out had it built, right? So there you go. And SG Knives out in Indonesia made his very first one. He carried it, he used it, he made some tweaks to it and things like that. And then he has now gone and made a production version, okay? I don't have a production version. This one did come with some patches, stickers, you know, all the normal fluff and stuff. Here is Jason Grant's contact info in case you want or need. And a little bit about the knife here from SG Knives. Okay. Comes in a nice package. It also comes with a titanium, best I can tell, tool for... One side are the body screws, and the other side is for the pivot. Uh, I, I guess is what that's for. It's not very clear, but it seems to fit. So, and it's a nice package. It's a nice hard cardboard, foam inside, all that good stuff. So, just set that off to the side, because nobody but me really cares about packaging. I know. Everybody has told me I'm dumb because I think packaging is important. Let's get on to the knife. This is a Warncliffe blade that is totally not my style. Not at all. This is the custom version. Okay. The production versions are sold out currently. But there will be another run from what I understand. The production versions are about $300 and are made by Best Tech. And I don't remember what steel exactly the production ones are using but they had them in sort of this color. They had them all blacked out. There was a couple different variations that you were able to get in on a pre-order for, and those have not yet shipped. Okay, as you can see, there are multiple deployments. It is a flipper, a front flipper, regular flipper, thumb, and yes, even I can finger flick it. And that's, well, I'm not even going to go there because we already all know my thoughts on the finger flip. This one has titanium scales, Timascus backspacer, Timascus uh, pocket clip, and Timascus pivot collars. So let's take a closer look and we'll talk about the blade finish. I do like that very clean satin. It's like a belt satin, if it will focus. Come on. So the blade finish is very nice. The Timascus pivot collars do kind of tie in the rest of the Timascus, which I do like. A ton of milling here for the frag pattern that does carry over to the backspacer, which I do like that. Timascus pocket clip that works well, however, and we'll get into that in a second. I like the fact that it is a completely sterile blade. There is no branding or marking or anything on it. I don't even know that there is any blade steel marking, although we know from the certificate that it is 154, CPM 154. So the pocket clip works. But with so much frag pattern back here, it doesn't smoothly go into your pocket. 
it does sort of get hung up depending on what jeans I have on. It may hang up a little bit on some of this frag pattern to the point where I kind of have to wiggle it into the pocket. It's not just a smooth shunk into the pocket. It needs a little bit of a do a little dance with it to get it in the pocket. That's not my favorite aspect of this knife. Like that is to me, that's kind of a negative. Um, but I have talked to some other YouTube folks that had the production version in as loners and they didn't seem to have that issue. So maybe it's just my frail pocket. I don't know. But again, I'm just going to give you my own opinions. The front flip action, let me zoom back out, is okay, but it's just not as crisp as I would like. And the reason why is because the lock bar tension is super light. It's a super light lockup. And there have been a couple of times that I have front flipped it and it not completely engage. If you slow roll this, it's going to potentially act like a slip joint. Not every time, but if you are like a light open, it's going to act like a slip joint. Give it a little bit of oomph and you're gonna be okay. However, as I have front flipped it a few times, it has not fully seated and locked up. So for that reason, I have a problem with that. And this is their custom version. So I have not heard that issue on the production ones. And I've not heard anybody else say that. So maybe that's just me, but I don't know how often you're slow rolling it anyway. And you got to kind of slow, slow roll it. I noticed it the first couple of times I front flipped it. And then I did notice it when I was just kind of on some work calls and fidgeting with my left hand that it did not always engage. Um, and because it's so light, a little bit of pressure in the wrong direction on the lock bar and it's going to unlock. So for me, that's just kind of a, yeah, that's a negative. It is fidgety for sure. Um, I think it almost needs maybe a little more jimping up here to get a little bit better grip on the front flip. It's just kind of the geometry. I don't know. It's not, it's, while it is a front flipper, I don't think that's its primary deployment method. Okay, enough about that. Let's talk about the specs real quick. It's just a hair over four inches. Seven and an eighth overall. 3.02 inch blade. 2.70 cutting edge, 0 0.017 behind the edge, and 0 0.149 thick as the blade, blade thickness. Now it is CPM 154 with a really nice hollow grind. And this one is very sharp. Okay. It certainly came very sharp um, from Jason. And I believe this is one Jason has carried and used and stuff like that. So take that into account as we talk about things. Overall thickness is 0.415. It does run on ceramic bearings and it weighs in at 3.6 ounces. So it is super light. It does carry in the pocket really well. Once you get it in, uh, it deploys out of the pocket super easy. So it's only slight issue going into the pocket, but coming out, it's perfect. It's no problem. Um, Jason is, he did tell me that he is going to be making his own knives himself here in the future at some point. Um, he is, like I said, a tattooist by trade, tattoo artist by trade. He has also been building tattoo machines for 20, 30 years. And he says that knife making is not much different than tattoo machine making. I don't know. I've never made a knife. I've never made a tattoo machine. I certainly have carried a lot of knives and used a lot of knives. And I have certainly had tattoo machines used on me quite a bit. Um, not by Jason. I have an artist here in my hometown that has done a lot of my work and then my 
original artist has since passed away. Pinky, rest in peace. Thank you for all you did for me. Getting me into the tattoo hobby way back when I was 18. So, um, so yeah, Jason is going to be doing some knives here himself. Going to start with fixed blades. Um, like most makers do, they start with the fixed blades and then they move on to folders. You can choke up. It's a very comfortable finger choil. All in all, I think it's a good knife. They do make it in, this is the three inch blade. There is a three and a half inch blade. Custom ones are 650 in the three inch. Three and a half is 750. And the production ones, ah, I believe the productions are three and a half. I think. Uh, and those ones were 300. So they may be, once they come out again, that price may or may not be 300. It was 300 for the the pre-order stuff. You know, that's kind of how it goes. Sometimes the price fluctuates once you deliver that initial pre-order. Um, you may adjust the price up or down. It depends. But let me give you a couple of quick size comparisons. Now that I've rambled on and I just looked and rambled longer than I thought. That's the, spider, the Sharpie. This is the Spider Codelica. Uh, let's go with another like unconventional type of blade, non-traditional, the Hellraiser P series. Go with another non-traditional-ish, the Sharknivco Ryu with its aggressive Tonto point that is super sharp and does super well. I just did some jerry can um, abuse with the Ryu for the Sharknivco Ryu, um, Sharknivco Facebook group. So, and it held up just great. It probably needs a sharpening now. Oops, my bad. Um, but it didn't really damage it. It did, the Sharknivco Ryu did really well. Uh, and then here is the VC Edge interface, which I will not be stabbing into the jerry can. Anyway, I will put some links down below to Jason's YouTube channel to the SG Knives uh, website uh, as well. Please go check them out. I think it's uh, a good first offering from Jason Grant over at the Brass Brigade in connection with SG Knives and Best Tech on the production side. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day.